Hey guys, well I'm out in the shop today and I'm going to be machining my very first part with the ATC. Uh, this is a good part to machine because it involves some manual tool changes, manual to automatic uh, tool changes, and so we get to see exactly how the new mock screen works and how the uh, ATC macro has been written. So we're going to be machining some of these coolant rings. I've already machined the slot and now we're just going to come back and we're going to be doing the holes uh, for the nozzles. So we're going to be doing some facing which is a manual tool change. Uh, we're going to do some drilling which is manual to manual so you get to see that process and then when we go from the drill bit to the end mill we're going to do a bore, a bore operation with an end mill and then come back and do a thread mill operation. So when I swap the drill out, I'll take it out and it'll automatically go get the end mill and then the last tool change will be strictly an automatic tool change. So this is a really good uh, program so you can see all aspects of the screen set. So currently the tool in there is a thread mill which is stored in the carousel. Uh, let's take a quick look at the new Mach 3 screen. You may have seen this in an earlier video I talked about this screen and so I was showing you this earlier on the laptop but you can see this is 1024 due to my monitor is square so it doesn't look quite as nice as it does on the uh, laptop widescreen. Originally this was designed for uh, 1398 by 768 I believe and this is 1024 by 768 so uh, here is the ATC tab and so what we're going to do is we're going to be doing a manual tool change so we're going to be storing uh, this tool here which is 62 or 61 I'm sorry so 61 is going to be stored in position 10 and then we're going to our first operation requires a face mill which is not stored in the ATC. So let's just start this G-code and we'll see how we go about this process. So I'm going to press cycle start. So we're going to store the ATC is going to retract and then the macro or Mach 3 is going to ask us to please load tool 46 which is my face mill. So I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to manually insert 46 in the spindle. I stepped on the foot pedal and then it's going to say press OK when clear. So I'm going to shut the doors Make sure I'm clear. Now we're going to start machining. Here we go. Pressed OK. Alright, so we're going to finish up here with the facing operation. And then we're going to do a manual to manual tool change. We're going to be going from our face mill to a drill bit, uh, which is also not in the carousel. I've got a bunch of those non ATC type TTS holders, and I use those for my drill bits and stuff like that, so uh, they don't have the ATC. So. Alright, so it's going to ask me to please remove tool 46, which is the face mill. I'm going to step on the pedal, remove the tool. It's going to press OK when clear. It's going to go up. It's checking the inventory in the carousel. Then it's going to ask me to please load tool 23, which is this uh, drill bit. We're going to shut the doors, it's going to say press OK when clear, and it's going to start my drilling operation. So you can 
see how it went from a manual to manual tool change. There are a couple of button pushes that you got to do there to uh, acknowledge the uh, messages. However, it's strictly for safety. Um, you want to make sure you're clear of the machine before the machine takes off again. So that's why those are in there. We've got our stack light working. So we get a green stack light when we're running. We get an amber and green when we're doing a tool change. Uh, this also coincides with the stack light on the screen here. We have our retract LED here and the tool position lock LED. I really like the overall layout of this screen. Uh, Mike did a real good job designing this. Again, I just made a few little tweaks just for my personal preference. All right, we're finishing up the last hole here. And the next operation is uh, we're gonna come back and bore these holes with a uh, tapered end mill. These are NPT threads, and so uh, it's going to be a manual to automatic tool change. So it's going to ask me to remove tool 23, which is the drill bit. Remove the tool. It's going to ask me to press OK when clear. So I'm clear. I'm going to press OK. It's going to raise up. It's going to go over to the position for the and do the tool change automatically. And then the last operation is uh, automatic to automatic tool change. So it'll store that tool and retrieve the next tool, which is a 1827 MPT thread mill. Finishes up the machining. So you can kind of see how the tool changer works and the macros work. So I, I have the availability to just strictly do manual tool changes, which is good for me um, because uh, there are tools that I just do not want to store in the uh, ATC. Uh, I've got 
uh, large face mills like this that you know they weigh a good bit so I don't want those hanging in the ATC it'll you know make it unbalanced and also I've got uh, you know boring heads like this that I'm not going to put in the ATC again for weight so it's nice to be able to do manual tool changes and of course if you're like me uh, I have you know probably 20 or so of these non ATC holders which like I said I, I use for drill bits and stuff that I don't commonly use every day and so uh, I want to be able to manually change these tools so I think it's going to work out really good. Uh, I'm having to get used to the eight, uh, Ethernet Smooth Stepper. Uh, for you, those of you already running an Ethernet Smooth Stepper, uh, you probably understand what I'm talking about. Um, some real weird, strange quirks that seem to be occurring. My buddy Wyatt was telling me about this. When I mentioned it, he, he told me, oh yeah, you have to do that. So, uh, probing. So for some reason, if the if your A, B, or C axis is not set at zero in the zero position, when you go to probe, it just acts weird. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but just a little quirk with the Ethernet smooth stepper. I'm assuming I didn't have any problems before, and so I'm kind of getting through those little bugs. I also had some. Um, port and pin situations that I had to work out. It was mainly my fault that resolved. It was some port pin issues with my stack light, but I got that resolved. Also, uh, I copied my old Mach 3 uh, .xml profile and then just updated it for the new information. But because I'm constantly building screens and testing things out, I inadvertently had my hotkey set so that uh, an OEM trigger one input would trigger a rewind. Well, we're using OEM trigger one for our foot switch in our macro, and that was triggering my G code to rewind. And it took me about took me a way through the day. I was running code in the process, so I just would, you know, start from here and keep running my code. But when I got time to actually get down and look into it, I noticed that every time I pressed the foot switch, it was causing me to rewind. So I got in there and looked, started looking at all my parameters, and I noticed that uh, Softy was set for uh, OEM trip uh, rewind. So got all that sorted out. But so far, so good. Um, i got to run about three more of these, and then I'm just going to continue testing this. Um, I want to get this ATC fully tested before uh, I start offering this. I do have to make sure that um, I've got everything running as smooth as I want. And then uh, those of you interested, will uh, you can contact me, and, and uh, we'll set it up. Guys, if you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in, click on the subscribe button down here below. That way when I post a new video, if it's something you're interested in, you can stop by and check it out. As always, guys, please feel free to ask questions, make suggestions, or leave comments. Thanks for watching the video. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe, and most importantly, be safe.